Lots of people find that creating detailed artwork that looks realistic very, very challenging. I found it very difficult when I started. A lot of my paintings looked flat and my drawings just looked a little bit cartoonish. In this video, we're going to share with you our thoughts and tips on how to paint details. First of all, you've got to make sure that you can actually see the details in your reference photo. You need to be able to see the details to put the details into the painting. So basically don't make up the details. Yes, that can look worse. You learn with the direction of the fur and things like that, so you can work things out. As a beginner, it's better to find sharper reference photos to work from if you're painting or wanting to paint details. Yeah. And if you've not got those sharper reference photos, it's better to work softer. Yeah, I would say so. That's what I would do. That's what I do too, if I've not got the details. Like some people want like pet portraits and they give shockingly bad photos. <laughs> which has happened quite a yeah. lot, <laughs> then you have to make up some of the details a little bit. Yeah. You can make educated guesses sometimes, because the likelihood is we have worked on a similar piece in the past that has had details in it. You can figure things out, but I think if you're just starting off, you've never painted a subject before, if you've got an out-of-focus photo, you might actually be better sticking to what you talked about in the last video, which is about the tones and the values. So if that's all you've got to work with, then that's we be better in that situation. The next tip is about having the right paint consistency. I find that having like more fluid paint helps with the details. I mean, it's hard to describe the perfect paint consistency that you need, isn't it? It's, it's hard. Yeah. Like you just know when it's too thick yeah. or you know when it's too watery. Yeah, no, like I like dab it on a tissue sometimes as well and to just double check. But yeah, you want it to be fluid enough that you can easily work with it, but it has to be thick enough that there's actually paint pigment there. It beads over the surface of the canvas if it's too watery, and that's just purely because there's not enough acrylic molecules in there to adhere to the canvas. You've got to get that balance between thinning down your paint so that it doesn't bead, but also so that it's thin enough that it flows off the edge of the brush, rather than painting thick impasto clumps of paint mm -hmm. you want quite thin sharp lines especially for those areas of fur or areas of skin like the eyes or like an object where you need very sharp defined lines when creating detailed artwork with watered down paint it can get a little bit translucent or transparent with acrylic paints yeah. specifically. Not so much with oil paints because they've got a bit more pigment in them. So they are a little bit more opaque. But the easy solution is just build yeah. up your details in layers. And that's the beauty of acrylics. That's why I love them so much because I like doing layers. I could do five layers on a section of fur just to build up the right level of details. Yeah, that, I mean, that's why I work in acrylics as well because the layers of acrylic paint dry so quickly. You can do a complete layer and then work on the next one within five minutes. Whereas with oils, you've got to do your layer and then you've got to let it dry for a day or two before you can start working on the next layer. I mean, I do like oils for painting. Oils are really, really good for painting softer looking fur. You know, more out of focus, yeah. blended fur. Yeah. And it's really good for the base layers as well with oils. Whereas acrylics, I would say acrylics are probably better for painting those like really sharp in focus areas. Yeah, I think go for acrylics on a smaller piece for that reason as well. You can get it done quicker. <laughs> I suppose, yeah. You can get it done quicker and it's easier to do those sharper yeah. lines on a smaller piece. The brushes you're using can also have a massive impact on the details in a painting. Yeah, it's just making sure you have brushes that are in good shape and they've still got, like round brushes, they've still got the points. They've not been frayed. You've got those really tiny detail brushes. Yeah. Yeah, they are great for like one or two paintings and then they crumble. <laughs> <laughs> they yeah, fall I think apart. Most, a lot do though, even yeah. a lot more expensive brushes can do that. I mean, there are ways that you can fix your brushes. I've never tried them, but like using soap, apparently, or using boiling water melts the glue a little bit and puts them back in place. I but I've never I've actually... That. Yeah, no, me neither. I've seen people do videos of it. Oh. I've never actually tried it, but maybe we'll have to give it a go and see. Because yeah. it would be nice to be yeah, able to save, save, some, <laughs> save some brushes. Making sure you have the right size brushes as well. Like, just having a good variety of different sizes so that you can just really pick out, like, experiment on, like, a spare piece of canvas or paper first, what marks you can do with that particular brush, and you'll learn quickly enough what you can do with it. And obviously we've done that from years of painting and experimenting with new brushes and things like that. Yeah, you just instinctively pick up the right one now. If I've got a new set of brushes, I would figure out what, what? they were capable yeah. of. 
yeah, definitely. Another thing with details that I find as well, sometimes it's better to not actually paint the details. I'm more painting the impression of details. Looking at your paintings, you can tell you've painted fur or you can tell you're painting a nose and they all look really good up close and from far away. Whereas mine get a little bit more abstract the closer up you get to them. Mm -hmm. And it's only when you view them from a distance that it starts to look like detailed realistic fur or detailed realistic eyes or whatever it is. And I think the point that I'm trying to make there is sometimes it's good to try and paint the details and then other times it's good to give the impression of details. For example, with painting trees, you don't have to go in with a tiny little brush and paint each individual leaf. You could go in and use like a fan brush or like a very frayed old bristly brush and you could just dab some of those leaves on that surface which you do with your brushes as well, don't you? With Like with fur and things. Yeah, especially depending on like the size of the painting. Like for a smaller piece, it will be more about the impression of detail because I think if you go too detailed, it starts to look a bit speckly or liney if you start to put in every single mark. It looks like you've almost over-sharpened a photograph. Yeah, exactly. And that can look a little bit, well, very wrong. You, you actually end up losing the details, you, don't you? You lose the realism if you go too detailed in some situations, yeah. I think. It's much better to put your details in the focal point, whatever your subject is, whether it's a person or a tree in a landscape or a still life. Most of your details want to be where you want the viewer to look. And where is further forwards in the painting as well, like in the wild dog that we're just painting here, I've focused a lot of the details around the eyes and nose because the head is the furthest part forward in the picture and then I've knocked back the details and made the details softer in the body. Colours that you use when you do it as well, like your, the actual wild dog itself, the face, the bits that are sharper and in focus, they're a little bit more saturated and a little bit lighter, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. And then you have that nice vignette at the background which softens it mm -hmm. and it's still detailed fur but you're not painting each individual strand, you're painting these clumps, you're keeping it a little bit out of focus and it just makes it look more detailed because you've got this depth. Yeah, I think if you put details all over sometimes, especially if there is different perspectives in the picture and it isn't all at one level, you can end up making your picture look quite flat. Yeah, very 2D and cartoonish. In fact, that's something that happens with a lot of my pictures. <laughs> they do end up looking quite flat and 2D because I just get too stuck in painting every single individual little hair and it's something that I'm learning and trying to improve is reducing that detail in some of the areas and trying to hold back and keep it soft and keep it loose and saving those details for the bits that I really want the viewer to hone in on and focus on. If you want more tips on how to create realistic artwork, check out my latest video.